Professor Buzzkill. Mini. Howdy, 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 Buzzkillers. It's your favorite professor here with your mini myth of the week. We're going to take you all the way back to 1978, Buzzkillers. That may be ancient history for some of you, but it's still current affairs for your favorite professor. A murder trial in California during late 78 became famous for something called the Twinkie Defense. According to myth and urban legend, a man who killed two people in cold blood successfully got his murder charge reduced to manslaughter because his lawyers argued that he suffered diminished capacity due to his excessive consumption of junk food. This Twinkie defense fanned the flames of people who were arguing that the American criminal justice system was out of control, that criminals could get away based on highly dubious psychiatric or psychological claims. But for this case anyway, the Twinkie defense was a myth. It never happened. Now, that didn't stop the press and chattering classes from becoming outraged. The Twinkie defense has entered the language referring to any absurd claim that might exonerate someone charged of a serious crime. The Twinkie defense meme spread more quickly than it might have because the crime and the trial were both very famous. Dan White, a former city supervisor in San Francisco, shot and killed Mayor George Moscone and city supervisor Harvey Milk who was one of the first openly gay elected politicians in the country. During the trial, White's defense team argued that he'd been suffering for a long time from depression that had gone untreated. The effects of the depression diminished his capacity to determine right from wrong. Therefore, according to White's defense team, he was incapable of the premeditation required for the charge of first-degree murder. As evidence of his worsening depression... Now, I'm going to repeat this. As evidence of his worsening depression, White's defense team argued that, among other things, he abandoned his normally healthy diet and stopped caring about things like appearance and clothes. Doctors testified that these were symptoms and indicators of his depression, and, of course, all that led on to the argument for um, not being able to determine right from wrong. Neither the defense team nor the doctors claim that Twinkies or any other junk food caused his depression and his diminished responsibility. The poor diet was one of many pieces of evidence that Dan White had become clinically depressed. It was the depression, the defense team argued, that led to his diminished responsibility, not the Twinkies. White was found guilty, but his charge was reduced to voluntary manslaughter and on May 21st, 1979, he was sentenced to seven years in prison. But the subtleties of his defense were overlooked by much of the press and the public. It was all too easy to leap to a Twinkie defense conclusion. Reaction in San Francisco was very sharp. Riots broke out that night, and there was a great deal of violence across the city. Now, Buzzkillers, it's not our place to comment on the validity of any particular verdict or any particular sentence handed down by a court. But like many myths and misunderstandings, the use of the phrase Twinkie defense in reference to this trial and ever since is a historical and is possibly damaging to understanding our legal system. So read carefully before you react to things like the Twinkie defense buzz killers. If it sounds too bizarre to be true, it probably is too bizarre to be true. Talk to you next week. 